You ready to go? Are you ready to go? You're on the dash. You ready for moving day? We're moving. Gee, you gonna let us drive a little bit before you start talking to us? Probably not. Gee, what are you doing? Good morning from a little dead-end street in a small little town called Nuevo Tingo. This is where we camped last night. It was a peaceful, quiet little place to camp. Kurt walks down to the little town square a couple of blocks away and had some breakfast. While I slept in a little bit and then I had to tackle making our bed, which is always fun. I don't think we've ever showed y'all that, so I took a little footage of that. So I'm sure that's quite comical. But <laughs> we've got the van ready to roll, and we are headed to a new, cool, exciting place. But I shouldn't call it a new place, because it's very, very, very old. So let's go. New territory here in Peru. We have made it out of our town, which was a little bit difficult. They had all the roads closed for all kinds of construction. But we are driving along this pretty river down in the bottom of a valley. And our next stop is normally a pretty busy tourist destination. But they've had a lot of landslides, big ones. Roads are closed for like a year, six months. And there's not many ways left to get to, here's a sign, Quellop, which is comparable, especially in importance of the Incas, to Machu Picchu. Uh, but we have heard from locals that there is a chance to get there on a windy little mountain road that ends with a little hike and you can still get in. Now we're trusting this local knowledge and we're trying to find this windy little road, but we honestly have no idea if we'll be able to get to Quellop at the top of this road or not, but it sounds like a fun journey either way. So let's go see if we can find a back entrance to a major tourist attraction that's actually almost closed. Did I get that right, Kurt? I think so. We're excited to go. It's like the poor man's Machu Picchu, but nevertheless significant to the Incas, so I'm excited to see it. All right, guys, here's an example. We haven't seen a lot of refrigeration. We've been looking for meat. But look at this meat just hanging here, drying, and there's flies all over it. it and it smells. We gotta go. Nope, you're okay. Oh, you're fine. You're plenty fine. You got a foot. You're plenty good. We have turned off of what they call a main road, which was actually a little tiny road, onto an even tinier road that the only way we can see it on the map is by looking at the satellite. It does not exist on Google Maps. And we're on our way up to what the locals say is the only way to get into these ruins right now. We're definitely climbing an elevation. It seems like we're still following along the river right now. And there's cactuses up on the mountainside, definitely dry and desert looking. And the good news is, at least for right now, the road is in pretty decent shape. So we're about to cross over a bridge. So let's see what the river looks like right here. Oh, it's really pretty. All right, we keep climbing up. I think this is about a 20 kilometer drive up here but again this is a definitely a back back road in to something that could very well be closed everyone you talk to except for very few locals have told us Quellop is closed because of the road cave-ins and mudslides and also there's a couple of cable cars that are both down now we don't know if the cable cars are down because there's issue with the cable cars 
I think it's more of a deal with the landslides up this way. This is kind of a back hidden interest that, entrance that most people don't even know about. Yeah, we've talked to a lot of people that just didn't go to Quellet because it was closed. So if we manage to get in on this back door, we'll be pretty lucky because it's definitely something that was on our list. Back. So the guy said Quelpa, Quella is Serato. We said you can go up there and you can walk around and you can see it. So I think we'll be fine to, I don't know what kind of visit we'll get, but I think we'll get something. We'll get there. So we're gonna be able to camp here, but it is not level. Not even close. Not even close. So Kurt is borrowing these sandbags that are here and we're gonna to try to get a little bit more level. Today's workout brought to you by leveling the van. You can see Quellup right there. And so definitely walkable, excited about that. And as for tonight, you can see the front is way lower than the back, even now. But I put that big sandbag up there on both sides and then one of our blocks. And still, we're leaning forward, but it's gonna have to work for one night, guys. It's tomorrow morning, we're headed up there. Pretty stoked. 500 structures up there, one of the most uh, important cities to the Inca culture way back so many years ago. Some folks measure their success by the labels in their suits. Some folks let their family ties choke them like a noose. But not me, my friend No, not me, my friend No, no, not me Not me We all got to die And when it's my time I'm gonna die living Die living So give me wings and I get talking Show me, show me to the stage Let me loose it, I will play, I will But hold me back or tie me down Trap me under a golden crown And watch me blow this nothing down I will, I will Die living Some folks argue politics till it drives them mad. Some folks let their problems shine with them like a badge. But not me, my friend. No, not me, my friend. No, no, not me. Not me. We all got to die. And it's my time, I'm gonna die living Die living So put me on a jet airplane And take me to a foreign place And fall in love with the stranger's face I will Show me something I ain't seen Take me someplace I ain't been I got my music in my old six string and I will, I will die living, die living, die living. This was our campsite. We had a decent night's sleep. We're packed up and ready to go. It doesn't look like a far hike, but I bet it is. We're headed up to those ruins up there. And we still don't know 
if it's open. <laughs> <laughs> we do not. No. Mixed stories. Yeah. Here you go. This is yours. Oh. Morning, everyone. It is a beautiful morning. And we are already on the trail up to Quailip. We had to leave the horses back at the van. Looks like they may be all here to come up and get do some farm work or maybe maintenance work at Quellup. In any event, started off this morning about 40, 45 degrees. Right now it's probably about 60 or 65 degrees. And we have about a little less than a mile hike up here and about 800 foot elevation gain. You can see the track, it's dry, it's rough. If it's rainy and wet, this would be a muddy mess. But as it stands, it's in pretty con condition. It's an absolute beautiful day. And we're over 10,000 feet elevation, so you're gonna hear us breathing. You're gonna hear us breathing. <laughs> we don't know if Quellup's open. We keep getting mixed answers. We've heard yes, it's open. We've heard no. We've heard that we'll be able to walk around outside the perimeter. So we will see when we get there. Yeah, you gotta pace yourself. So we're coming up through this trail. And here's an adobe house, a mud house. I can't tell if it's uh, what the construction type is. Probably adobe block. We see a lot of this in northern Peru. What we've noticed so far is this seems to be a little bit more economically challenged area. So definitely more humbling. And also, to be honest with you, we've had a hard time finding supplies and provisions. We've looked around. They have a lot of small tiendas, almost like convenience stores with chips and sodas and junk food. Maybe some noodles. A lot of the vegetables have been a mixed match. But anyway, we struggled. So we're still struggling. We're looking for a city. So you can see that right there. That is Waddle and Dob. So you see how they use the sticks. There's sticks on both sides and they pack the middle with mud. Those are, those are the blocks that I've been telling you about. The adobe blocks. So you can see right here on this building, this is adobe blocks. And then the front of it, which is very traditional here in Latin America, they only stucco or finish the front side of it. And then the back and the sides is not open. So anyway, we made it up to this little hostel here. And now we got a little hawk hike up to the rest. How you doing, Snow? <laughs> at 10,000 feet, breathing is more of a challenge and as important no matter what elevation. Yeah. We'll have to remember to come down this way though. Yeah, that'll be easy. Yeah. We're right here at the house. So this is the trail. This other trail is the trail they were working on. All right, so we've just kind of learned from that guy that we've taken a shortcut. So not sure about the stats that I quoted you earlier in the video. They're probably fairly close. Anyway, it was a steep climb, but not a super long climb. Buenos dias. So anyway, we're walking around. We've heard it's closed. And there's supposed to be a mirror door over here. Hopefully we can get a peek inside well, for you and, guys. And this thing's so important to the Incan history that I'm okay just getting to see the outside. The fact that we're even here. It's pretty amazing. One of my favorite things about these last couple of hikes in this kind of arid, dry environment is the amazing wildflowers. Purple, pink, yellow. Here's peach. It may be dry, but it is colorful. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. All right, we're getting closer. These are more organized steps. Again, we've seen videos of them working on this trail. 
not long ago. So clearly we've made it up to that area. Not quite there, just under 3,000 meters. And so I'm sure by the time we get up there, we're gonna be really close to 3,000 meters. All right, we made it up top. It only took us probably about 20 or 30 minutes. We didn't get the official time, but it turned into be a little shorter walk than well, we thought. Of our shortcut. <laughs> well, and we're both getting in better shape. I mean, you know, if you can remember back to Snow's Hike when we did the big waterfall, El Pylon del Diablo, and then she's climbed Gotka, which was major. And then we just did Pueblos de las Muertos. So she's got some big hikes under her belt. And this one's kind of easy peasy. So this area is fenced off. Closed. There's a security guard up there. And I definitely prohibido el ingreso. We can see a bit of the stone wall. It's kind of cool where it's eroded right there. You kind of get a good look. But this is actually a walled city. So they built a wall all around this thing. And so, it's known how tall its walls are. So there's this farmhouse at the base of the ruins. And I asked the guy if I could walk through here, ask for permission. So I don't know. This is not an official trail. I'm sure it's probably something here. Somebody else has chopped through here. But we've kind of gone off road. I guess this is a little braver than Snow wanted to partake in. So she's taking a break back there. But you can see there's a little trail through here. And I'm hoping I can get a couple more peaks. I hate to see this journey, Quellup is just such an amazing place. I hate not to be able to see it. And I hate not to be able to show you guys. So I'm going to put in a little effort and see if it pays off. But I feel like we're kind of going down a little bit. And I've lost sight of Quellup, but it's up the hill. So I don't know if we're going to get back around there or not. We'll see. We'll go. All right. After a tight squeeze through that little claustrophobic trail. Ah. Uh, we're going down, unfortunately. So my hopes to get around this side to see another wall are not gonna happen. We're getting further away, so I gotta head back up to where snow is. I think as I was walking away, the security guard came up. So maybe there's a way to get around and see the other side. Hopefully we can, we'll see. I'm trying, but I can't really pretend that this is not a big disappointment. But the guard showed us a big landslide a big landslide on the other side. For those guys who are tracking Snow's progress since she's had the knee surgery seven months ago, and for those of you who are new to the channel and don't know, Snow had total knee replacement. We were in Medellin uh, for four months, so that was about seven months ago. So she's doing amazing, but the one thing that is still an extreme challenge is these downhills. And the way this is sloped, certain angles are more difficult than other ones. But this is definitely a diff difficult challenge slope for where her knee is in terms of progress. I'm sure she's gained a ton of strength in her legs that she didn't have before. But she's still got some work to go. And she's getting there. Slow and steady. Wins the race. All right, I made it down in two minutes, 9.02. But when I got down here, I realized the 360 that Snow had tucked away in the backpack was no longer with me. So I had to run all the way halfway back up the track to pick that up. Hopefully the lens is not scratched, but they're still down here packing up the limestone and carrying up the mountain on these horses to fix this landslide and to safe this thing up so they can get it open back up. Hi, how you doing? Como esta? Buen dia. Buen dia. Ah, baby. Cuantos años? Cuatro meses. Cuatro meses. Wow. Como te llamas? Como me llamas? Uh, what's her name? Cristel. Cristel? 
Loren. Loren Cristel. Hola, Loren Cristel. Ojos es azul. Mucha. But this is how they do it. I've talked to you as we've been on various trails about how they use these horses and mules to pack stuff up the mountains. And so down here, they're loading up these bags with this limestone. And where you saw us on the limestone trail, they're carrying it up there. And I would imagine they're carrying some of the stuff over to the other side where the whole ruins have, have uh, sort of eroded away. But in any event, I gotta get here and get the van ready to go. All right, 30 minutes later, we're in the van. The GPS says we have two and a half hours to Liambamba, which is a place where we hope we can get some supplies that we're in desperate need of. Also find a place to stay. And we may, depending on how we feel, make a decision to head on because this is one of those areas where we have a lot of driving to get to the next spot. So we don't have a precise plan. We're gonna take it as we go and we're gonna bring you guys along. So we're coming down this switchback mountain and headed to our destination. But on these mountain sites, we see all sorts of switchbacks. A lot of them, quite honestly, are for pedestrians and animals. Some of these places I think we've already showed you, maybe in other videos, maybe in this one, we've showed you where people live out on top of these mountains and there's no road access and they'll have big farms and hold things up there so a lot of these switchbacks a lot of these switchbacks are just for people to go up to their farms or their houses and they use those donkeys and horses and stuff and it's, it's yeah it's pretty interesting that's one right there look at that yeah what are you doing bud Big happy van family. Oh, she was spread down the beans. Oh, yeah, it looks like they're drying. I thought it was coffee, but I don't think it is. Oh, this is where they were drying the meat the other day. I don't, yep, I don't know what that is, but it's some kind of seeds. It's not coffee. We've seen coffee all over the place. Maybe it's a quinoa or something. Maybe a quinoa or something. Help us out, guys. What is that stuff? So we're still in this huge canyon, driving along the river that cuts that, that once cut it out. And we've kind of climbed to the top of it a few times, but we'll probably be in this most part of the day. Along here, you can see they have rock quarries. They just pull the rocks right out of the river and they have a crusher set up over there. And they'll they have a classifier, so they'll make the rocks into different sizes to make different products, roads, concrete blocks, etc. But anyway, this road is variable width, meaning some places it's two lanes, some places it's barely one lane. And so it's another white knuckler, even though we don't have the steep slopes. Another thing that we've seen a lot along here is these pedestrian bridges to get across the river. Little cable trolleys. Yeah, or cable trolleys. So in a lot of places you can't cross. There's no no car bridge. And up here you can see there's another one of those little quarries on the side of the river. All right, so let's see what he's putting out there. Something else. It looks like corn. I think it's either corn or hominy. And then they're also putting out some beans. And I think that other lady was putting out seeds. And now it looks like here he's got several giant bags. They're probably gonna spread out somewhere. But look at this little town through here. <laughs> Still, no stores. Still hungry. We've been cruising right along. 30 minutes to go. And here we go, waiting <laughs> on construction. To all my friends, those darn construction workers. <laughs> Leah Bamba's got some 
gross weight vehicle maximums, we are qualified so we can cross the bridge and continue our journey. As we turn the corner, Snow pointed out this is one of the places you don't want to hit the roof with the van as you turn the corner. And one of the reasons why I've learned that these houses have such big overhangs is to protect the stucco. You can see how, or the, the mud walls, you can see how that one was eroded away. But we are in this little town. The streets are narrow and uh, we're looking for Groshen water. All right, so we've got a dilemma here. We've come up these narrow streets and there's no way through here. There's some police up here. Let me see if I can ask them. Otherwise, we got to back up that, guys. All right, we have finally found somewhere to eat lunch and we have ran into some other overlanders. And what is cool about this is we've been communicating online with these guys since September. Yeah, with some pet questions. Yeah. And then they just crossed that crazy border we did. Introduce yourselves. Um, my name is Eric. And you nice to meet you guys. Tell them where you're from. Uh, I'm from the U.S., but I, I grew up in Hong Kong. Okay. And oh, wow. we met in Asia before coming back to the U.S. Oh, so nice. The nice. And what about where are you from? Uh, from Tokyo, Japan. Oh, awesome. oh, we love Tokyo. Oh, love, yeah, love, we love visited Tokyo. there. We loved Tokyo. That's the reason why we live in a van. It is. <laughs> we'll tell that story when we quit videoing. But it, what's really awesome, guys, is we were finally, finally starting to run into overlanders again. I think it's a sign that the COVID overlanding drought may be over. How long have you guys been in your van? Uh, just over three years. <laughs> oh, excited. Just like us. We, um, we left end of May. 2019. Uh -huh. Got into Mexico December 2019, and that's when COVID started. Yeah. It just started becoming a thing. And then um, when we, it finally became serious and we had to find a place to stay, we were in San Cristobal. Wait a minute. Process. Hold on. All right. Enough for the vlog. We have to turn off the camera because I think we were probably right by each other and didn't even know it. We were in so, San Cristobal. We were in, uh, <laughs> back to our video, San guys. Cristobal. All right, here's our store. Sweet section. Do they have water? Uh, we ate lunch, ran into some overlanders that we've actually been talking to quite a bit online, so that was cool. We have decided not to stay in that little town. We managed to find a couple of stores and throw together a couple of little items of food, but still, yeah, still not a place to stock up. So we've decided not to stay there, which means we've got a three hour drive across an Andes mountain range. And we're gonna come pulling in to our next town that we're gonna camp at, at about dark. And the reason we can't stop in between once we made this commitment to go because the Andes mountain range is at a high elevation. We can't camp too high. Remember our little kitty cat Vanna cannot stay overnight in really high altitudes. So once we made this decision, we had to hit the road. We had to hit the road and we gotta make it to the next valley. We're pushing through guys, We're pushing through. Here's the problem. If you can see this road, it is narrow. It is mostly one lane road, just like we've been on, with a few random passing places, a lot of blind corners and S curves. So we are pushing for time, but at the same time, we have to be super careful because this road is just, it's, it's a one lane road. And we will pass people. But as we're coming up through here, we definitely notice the terrain has changed. There's more trees. Don't know what it's going to look like as we get up into these mountains, but I'm excited to see. Usually, when we're starting out on a drive, it's going to be a bit hairy. We know. We've re researched, we've read, we know the road's a little sketchy. 
nobody said anything about this road being a little bit sketchy. And so far, coming up out of that town, it has been narrow with big drop-offs, blinding curves. Kurt's already told you that. But I think what's a little weird about this one is in some sections, the pavement is in really good shape. So I think maybe locals would tend to drive faster coming around these blind curves. It's been a bit sketchy, hadn't it, Kurt? Yeah, we already passed the car earlier in the day. It was all banged up like it had a head-on collision. <laughs> and uh, quite honestly, if you meet a car head-on, there's no place to go. You have to stop. I mean, there's just... Here. Yeah, you got to figure it out. So, it out. so we're hoping this road isn't this way the whole way. Y'all cross your fingers because if so, we it's going to probably gonna, bit off more yeah, than we can chew. Yeah, but we do the research, and this just did not pop up on our radar as a road that would be, be like this one. So, hopefully, it is short-lived. Whew! Glad Kurt's driving and not me. All right. Two minutes after I said, let's hope it gets better. It has deteriorated quickly, but at least the cars can't fly through here and that's good. Whew, looking for the silver lining. And 30 seconds later, when we are time crunched, we come up on road construction. You know I was looking for a silver lining and the silver lining I can find is at least they're filling this giant pothole that we don't have to drive through now. I bet it was as bad as the one we just went through, so it's a good thing. We made it through that construction site with the construction workers filling potholes, which actually has been about the only thing that has improved the conditions of this road. We went through about two or three miles of repaired roadway which was nice it's still narrow and windy but we've climbed to about 11,000 feet and we're kind of almost on like a little high plane so the road is a little better it's still narrow but we're making decent time so hopefully we'll make it Kurt is doing some intense concentrating on this drive not only is it windy and curvy we have to worry about cars coming around the curves but there are sheer drop-offs along the edge of this road. So there's no room for error, but the road is in some decent shape. We just have some stuff we have to watch out for. Like yeah, that. yeah. These, these drops are as sheer as any of we've seen. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to take the time to show you, but uh, yeah, aside from being asphalt and fairly good condition, it's narrow and just a sketch. I think this is as pretty of a mirador as we've seen. We can see so far, down below us, we can see some switchbacks coming up a mountain in the canyon. <laughs> we can see some other canyons in there. But we just have such a big look at the Andes Mountain here. And the sky is so blue. It's not something we've commented on. But in Ecuador, it was mainly rainy season. And we got blue skies, and that just makes this pop. But we don't have time to stay long. Just to keep you all in the loop, we are at about 12,000 feet right now. And Kurt is maintaining our time. It still says we'll get to our hopeful campsite around 440, which is really good. We've got a buffer before dark, but this drive is gonna wear on Kurt. He's gonna be exhausted. I'm just so nervous. You guys probably already know I'm afraid of heights. And I think Jay's squawking because we're up at 12,000 feet. So we need to get over this high point and get back down at altitude. So we're working as hard as we can to make it happen. And staying safe. And fortunately, we have beautiful views while we're going through this stressful drive. So we are up above the trees and the rocks are starting to change, the type of rock. They're getting darker. We seem to be getting away from the lime rock material as we climb up over this mountain range. And the way these big rocks stick out of these smooth grass mountaintops, it sure is pretty.
got to tell y'all, this has turned into one heck of an afternoon. I know it seems like we've got a lot of drama going on on our channel sometimes. We had no idea that we were going to encounter a road like this. We knew we were crossing the Andes Mountains, but we had done research, we had done everything, and there were no vlogs, no videos, no posts on iOverlander to tell us that this road was going to be maybe one of the scariest we've driven. Now it is paved for the most part, but I think that may even add to how scary it is because I think I said this earlier, the locals can go faster. They know where the curves are. They know where the blind spots are. So we come around these curves and there's a car coming right at us. Now, thankfully, there's not a ton of traffic. We've probably passed, what, 10 cars? I don't even think even yet. But you just don't know when they're gonna be there. And it's, uh, this has been a traumatic afternoon that we did not expect. So it started off with a little bit of disappointment this morning with Quellop being closed and it turned into a sure enough white knuckle afternoon and it is not over but I think we're gonna make it to our camp before dark and get settled in but man guys you got anything to add to that Kurt or are you just driving not a typical day in van life no. unless you're snowing Kurt and then yeah it's pretty typical pretty typical seems like we're starting to come down in elevation but the road's still pretty pretty much a mess I mean, I gotta tell y'all what Kurt said a minute ago <laughs> I would have given anything to have had it on film but he said my butt is clenched so tight I'm gonna poop a pencil <laughs> I'm sorry if that was too much information <laughs> but this, I think it's true <laughs> it's true it's true this is the real deal guys this is Wow. We were just talking about it. This is likely going to be our scariest drive. And I don't know if it's just the way the weather lined up and that we can see all the drop-offs. Maybe it being cloudy and foggy is better as far as being scary. We used to think no, but now we're not sure. Yeah. I think a cloudy road where you don't see 5,000 foot straight down plunges to death might be better. But it's definitely a top three. And it, it may be our scariest drive yet. It's so unexpected. But yeah, Kurt's gonna poop a pencil. <laughs> We've come up on another pothole repair crew. And you will not hear us complain about these guys at all. Because that means ahead of us here, maybe, well, we just came through some fresh patches. They're making this road a little bit bearable. All right, time update. We're still on schedule according to the Google. We got an hour and a half to go. You all may hear the windows down a little bit on this drive and that is because our good friend back in Orlando, Jennifer, well, she just happened to be at her vet after she heard about on the video of Anna having the altitude sickness. So a recommendation coming from her vet back in Orlando was when we're in the really high altitudes, crack the windows a little bit and let the fresh air run through the van. So that's what we're doing. We'll give y'all an update on how Vanna's doing when we get to the next destination. So far, she just seems to be fine. She's chilling on the dash. But thank you for that information, Jennifer, and thank you for thinking of us. So here's a good example where we actually get a view of a drop-off we're gonna be driving by soon. We don't know if the sheer straightness, I don't even know if that's a word, of the drop-off come through on the video but we wanted to try to show you. Straight down. All right, a little behind the scenes info for you guys. We decided to stop. I walked, I don't know, maybe a football field or so down the road so we could get a good shot of the van driving down this road. And as I was walking down the road, I passed this giant cave. I mean, there was lots of little birds flying in and out of it and I couldn't see the end of it. I didn't stop because I had the heebie-jeebies because I was walking next to the giant drop-off. But that was a cool unexpected surprise. Okay. Yeah. Because I know it's close on your side, it's close on here too, so slow is better. 
have dropped down significantly in elevation, but the road has still got us holding our breath. I think Kurt may need a shot of his Ecuadorian tequila when we finally make it to camp. Oh, maybe I will too. This has been a two-person driving job. <laughs> I can tell you, it's definitely two-hand driving. Whew. Vanna's sleeping through the whole thing. She's got the right idea. Look at this bright orange cliff face we're driving next to. Amazing colors are starting to appear on this drive. On this drive that we sure wish was over. <laughs> 40 minutes to go. We have made it down to the river riverbed, down in the bottom of the valley. <sighs> that was a hairy drive. Good job, Kurt. Still not quite to the camp, but I think the scary part of our journey for the day is over. And we are around 4,000 feet for those of you that are tracking. We'll see y'all at the camp. All right, we have made it to our camp spot. It is just a barren place where we could find to pull off the side of the road. What a long and intense day. If you can look up on the side of the mountain and see those scars, we came down through that area right there. I think we're gonna have a similar day tomorrow, at least for a few hours in the morning. We're here for the night. And this is where we're gonna end the episode. This is where we're going to leave you guys. Thanks so much for joining along. We couldn't do this journey without see you. See in a few days. We'll see you in a few Cheers. days. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.